Alrighty, welcome to this week's Wowhead Weekly News Recap. Today, we're going to be talking about everything that we saw this week in the news. And the big headliner is obviously the 10.2.6 launch. Uh, the headliner of that even is Plunder Storm, which is a WoW Battle Royale mode. So for 10.2.6, there wasn't a PTR. There wasn't really any super advanced data mining over here at Wowhead. Um, and that allowed for Blizzard to be able to kind of drop onto the players this Battle Royale mode. Basically, it's a 60-player Battle Royale. It doesn't use typical WoW characters, so you'll have to level up and acquire new abilities and spells by killing creatures in typical BR fashion. And then a Wrathy Highlands is where the event takes place. There was a great WoWcast episode um, where we saw Kirby and uh, some of the other team members who ended up creating this BR kind of talk about the process and what you should be looking to expect. I would definitely recommend going and looking at that if you haven't played Plunderstorm. Plunderstorm also has two modes. It has solos and duos where you're able to, you know, either compete with one buddy or compete by yourself. And so you can kind of join in on that. Additionally, you don't necessarily have to have Dragonflight to be able to play Plunderstorm. And it's inside of the WoW game client itself, which is kind of unique. Uh, we haven't really seen anything like that before in regards to how you play World of Warcraft. Most of the time, something would come out and it might be queuable content inside of World of Warcraft or inside of Classic. But basically, everybody can kind of jump in. And there's different rewards that you are able to get. And we can kind of take a look at the rewards. There's a renown system. And as you level up, you gain renown. Just call it experience for the point, the purpose of this video. Uh, and as you gain experience, you're able to unlock, you know, new features and new things that are accessible by your World of Warcraft account. Obviously, there's a couple of mounts. There's an underwater mount at Renown 10. There's a parrot mount at Renown 20 and at Renown 39. And those are all super cool. There's a decent amount of pets. There's a bunch of mogs that you're able to achieve. And most of it's pirate themed, all things considered. It is a lot of pirate and underwater themed, uh, really sticking with the thematic that they're going with, with the Arathi Highlands and the pirates and that kind of thing. Um, so that, that was kind of what we saw with Plunderstorm being announced. On top of that, uh, there's a there's been a lot of people kind of speculating as to what the optimal build for Plunderstorm is, and I think that nobody knows. I think that Plunderstorm is a mode that uh, a lot of different builds work in conjunction with one another often. And personally, my favorite build involves Rhyme Arrow and Holy Shield and kind of poking people at far range. I also enjoy the the Mana Sphere to be able to poke people at far range. And I'm a weirdo, and I love to windstorm people from a full screen away and stun them. And so. I'm basically just hitting you from very far range. I'm sure everybody else has a kind of different build that they want, whether it being using, you know, Searing Axe and Toxic Smack Roll and like stunning people up and, and that kind of thing, or, you know, playing like traditional builds like Fire Whirl and stuff like that. In addition to that, we have actually seen some nerfs to uh, some of the Plunderstorm abilities. I know that Rhyme Arrow got a nerf, Fae Form also got a nerf, Fire Whirl has been nerfed a couple of times now. Um, and, and overall, you know, there's not extensive tuning to Plunderstorm. It's more of a casual game mode, all things considered, that Blizzard was trying to spring onto people as a surprise and as like a project of passion. And that's kind of what we saw from the Blizzard developers whenever they were talking about this project. It was like, like it was a project of passion that they they wanted the players to just have a lot of fun with it and to kind of help fill the content and drought between now and the world within. And I think it's been doing a pretty good job of definitely satiating that. It is a limited time event. It's not going to be up forever. I believe it is a six week event, but um, with that all being considered, it's uh, it's very fun. I would highly recommend jumping into it. I, my personal preference, I love duos. I think that duos is definitely the way that this game mode is supposed to be played. But on top of that, there's also been a renowned buff. So if you played the first day, what what you want to know is that there, before it was going to take you a lot of hours to actually be able to get up to 39 or 40 renown to complete all of this during the six weeks. Now that's not so much. Uh, you only probably have to play like an average, like two or three games a day to be able to get 40 renown throughout the six week period. Obviously, if you play any more or potentially even win lobbies, you're going to be able to get it. So it's not something that you have to like super sweat over if you want the rewards because they have changed the renown grind. A pretty significant amount and and buffed it up i think you're now getting you know about 45 to 5 4500 to 5000 reputation per win and that's a significant portion you get a lot of rep whenever you win and so that that will go a long way towards your rewards 
In other 10.2.6 news, there's also a Crater, Crater Royale that has been announced for Plunderstorm. And so they Blizzard has invited 60 creators out to play in a Plunderstorm Creator Royale where there's you know specific pricing on the relative placements and you can kind of see the players that are shown right here. I had a chance to catch up with Growl and kind of talk to him about what he was going to think about the creator event and kind of what his general thoughts on Plunderstorm were. And so we can take a listen to that right now. All right, so today I'm also joined by Growl to kind of talk about the Plunderstorm tournament that we saw uh, and just kind of get his opinions on a couple of things and kind of talk about just what we've seen with the Plunderstorm tournament. So Growl, you're competing with Dorky, correct? Yup, that is right. Uh, it's a big duos tournament. Um, I believe it's 60 content creators that were, have been invited. And so, Growl, what have you been thinking about the mode altogether? You having fun? Uh, actually, I've been having a blast. There's kind of a meme going around that, oh, everyone's playing in the tournament, so that's the only reason why they're doing it, is because they want to win. But I've actually been having a ton of fun. I've been playing a lot off-stream, different people, solo queuing. I actually think the mode is very fun. Uh, we've seen a couple of balance passes lately, which has been kind of interesting because I didn't necessarily think that Plunderstorm was going to get balancing passes. Um, wh what have you been thinking about the fact that they've been willing to kind of, you know, tune down a couple of spells? I think Rhyme Arrow, Fable Link, and Fire World are the main ones that got changed. Uh, yeah, they uh, did more balance tuning to this than they did in Season 3 of the Mythic Plus, which is interesting. <laughs> um, I mean, I like the changes. To me, it's a good sign. I mean, I think the mode is fun. It's definitely going to take a lot of love and care if they want to continue it forward. And I kind of expected them to just kind of do this as a flash in the pan and then move forward. But I think the fact that they're willing to tune the abilities and do it pretty quickly is a good sign for the future. Like, I hope to see maybe the mode come back in a year or, you know, from some other time. And then maybe with, you know, new abilities or a new map or something. So, yeah, it's... Uh, cool, I guess. It's a little disorienting because it's happening so fast. It's like, yeah. the mode is out, and then I'm playing this build, and then this ability changes, and then, like, I'll be in a mode, and I'll notice, like, my ability will just be going slower, and I'm like, wait a second, and then there's a patch, and it's like, I mean, it's good that they're doing it fast, but it also is a little bit disorienting. Like, I feel like Fire World, uh, specifically was good especially early game but it wasn't really that good it's kind of one of those things where it's like a noob slammer and while everyone's not good at the game it kind of owns but there definitely were counters to it and now i think it's actually like a pretty underwhelming ability with how hard they hit it what is your favorite build then that you're playing right now um i've been messing around i think a effective like to try and win having multiple movement abilities is really really important and like a lot of times it'll be hard to have like a really high damage or a high combo build with that so that isn't always the most fun uh usually i like to have some sort of like you know chain stun blow people up when i'm just messing around so i kind of alternate between like i don't know like a stun with like searing axe or the fish and jumping around for fun or if i'm trying to win like go you know fey and uh vanish and then just like some ranged abilities yeah, it's kind of interesting seeing like Holy Shield and Rhyme Arrow versus, you know, like you're saying, like the combo of like the Leap Stun and then Searing Axe plus Fish. Because like, I also think that duos probably factor into that a little bit as well, because the tournament is like a duo tournament. And because of that, you can actually chain stuns into one another. And, and that actually kind of creates for some different combos that might be a bit better than it would be in just like solos. Yeah, I think I think duos is really how the game mode was meant to be played in terms of the abilities working together in, in time to kill. That's one thing I would say to anybody if you've like maybe solo queued a couple games and you're like, man, this isn't that fun. I j like don't even really have that much fun with solo queue. Like I would highly recommend looking for a bud to play with or even just duo queuing by yourself and grabbing a partner because I think the interactions with the teammates and like comboing off each other and like protecting is is a lot of the fun of the game. Uh, beyond that, you guys practicing for this? Like, uh, how, how serious are you guys taking it? I've seen some teams, you know, probably going to show up day of, not really played as much. Some teams are, like, really going super sweaty and practicing a bunch. How have you guys been faring uh, for the tournament itself? Uh, Somewhere in the middle. I mean, personally, I'm having fun playing the mode, so I'm playing it a ton. In terms of practicing, like, oh, me, me and Dorky and queuing together and talking about strats, something about... <laughs> plunder storm and like random matchmaking it feels a little bit wrong to just try that hard 
So, like, even practicing is more just kind of, like, us running around and, like, using random abilities and just, like, seeing what works. So I would say, like, maybe, like, a 6 out of 10. Like, we're definitely playing a lot and we want to win, but, you know, to, it, it just feels a little wrong to, like, go super hard in a tournament that's, like, you know, for fun game mode. All right, cool. Uh, that's all I have for you today, Growl. Again, check out the Plunderstorm tournament. It's March 30th will be the date, so go cheer on your favorite team. Maybe cheer on Growl if you don't have a favorite team and you're looking for somebody to uh, support. So thank you so much, Growl, for joining today, and uh, we'll see you guys later. All right, it's always great to catch up with Growl. Again, go watch the Crater Royale March 30th at 10 a.m. Pacific if you want to check that out. Um, in, others, in other 10.2.6 news, let's talk about some of the stuff that we've seen with Season 4. Now, it's not been a ton. There hasn't been a Season 4 that's hit the PTR yet, so there's still some stuff that we're waiting to find out over here on WoWhead. But there is some stuff that we actually have kind of figured out with what we've seen from Season 4. Uh, first and foremost, it seems as if there's going to be no rotating raids in Season 4. There's just like a splash screen for Season 4. And so I, I think that there's going to be a really interesting decision as to what Blizzard is going to do with faded raids. I don't think it's necessarily called faded in season four, but like we're going to just use faded for the purposes of this video. What they're going to do with faded raids has kind of been an interesting point of discussion where faded wasn't largely loved by the community. It was it was actually interesting to kind of allow some players to be able to go back and play raids that they otherwise wouldn't have over the course of the entire expansion. But in general, for a lot of the uh, player base that had engaged with the content over the course of the entire expansion, it just wasn't something that they were in love with. And this, hopefully, is going to be Blizzard now taking a hack at changing up what the formula is for this. I guess now it's called Awakened, but yeah. So so the Awakened season is going to be kind of interesting to see what the formula is that they're going to take a hack at for raids. Could they be piecemealing something together, like, you know, eight different bosses from different raids that they're just going to plop down in one another? Is it going to be one specific raid that they're going to be looking at? Uh, we know that there's been some... You know, trinket tuning and, and some tuning to some of the abilities and items that you can achieve. That could be due to a dinar system that we know that is coming due to Ian Hezekos is kind of talking about that at BlizzCon. I think that the future of what the Awakened Raids is going to look like and the rotating raids being gone is promising. But what it's going to look like is yet to be seen. In other Season 4 news, we also have the dungeon rotation confirmed. Now, there was pretty decent speculation as to what the dungeon rotation was going to be. And now we know that it's all eight Dragonflight dungeons. Dawn of the Infinites doesn't seem like it's on this list as it currently stands. And so that kind of, to me, points towards Dawn not being present uh, to where we're going to be having all eight of the original Dragonflight dungeons uh, again in a new season. I think that there's, a, there's some other stuff that might be coming down the pipe for what they're going to be changing for the Awakened season. But again, this isn't stuff that we really know as the dungeons haven't hit the PTR. And so it's like, and some of the stuff hasn't hit the PTR. So there's not really any consistent data money with this. But we do know that the dungeons are going to end up being the eight Dragonflight dungeons, which are Alg Academy, Brackenite Hollow, Halls of Infusion, Nalthoris, RLP, Azure Vault, Nokud, and Uldamon. On top of that, there's been some dungeon tuning to these dungeons. I mean, we could kind of go through some of the tuning. I think obviously the big ones are like, you know, Nalthoris chain stuns. They functionally change how the chain stun works, where now it doesn't deal damage, but it increases the damage taken of the mobs by 50% for five seconds. And it also now stuns enemies for five seconds. They also removed the uh, importance of decurse in the last boss. All, all things together, most of the stuff is, is pretty low impact stuff but they'll it'll make for a better player experience i think in the long term inside of these dungeons especially since they're bringing it back so i'm actually happy to see that they're going to be uh going through with that on top of that they're also changing the they're squishing the dungeon difficulties uh, i don't know if you guys saw that recently on wowhead but basically blizzard is going through and basically making a 10 current m0 level and they're squishing down and trying to consolidate down the dungeon levels to be able to allow players to more easily play through the dungeons and kind of um, you know, just interact with the dungeons because they they had assessed that players were struggling to be able to interact with the dungeons in any meaningful way, and they thought that the range of the keystones being from like two to thirty was just a bit too high. Also, some new titles for hardcore players and you know uh, non-hardcore players alike, where you're going to be able to get season four titles for the Draconic, which is attain a mythic plus keystone rating of fifteen hundred, the Draconic Hero, which is the point one percent title. There's also a Northrend racer for obtaining all gold races in Northrend. If you're into dragon riding achievements, that will be something that you can absolutely go for as well. 
Awakened Hero for completing all three Awakened Raids on Heroic Difficulty or higher, and then some PvP Draconic Gladiator, Draconic Legend achievements for those uh, pers respective players. There's also been, interestingly enough, Dungeon Trinket Tuning, and they've kind of reworked some of the Dungeon Trinkets. Um, Umbral Skull's Fractured Heart. I, I don't, I'm not like super clear as to how this works, but it's actually kind of interesting. Your harmful spells and abilities have a chance to call up an arcane power to inflict your target with sickness, dealing da arcane damage over 10 seconds. Creatures other than players and bosses who drop below 5% health while afflicted with the crystallize die. They, okay, so they die at 5%? Like, that's actually crazy if it's like a 5% to zero execute. And then they affect a near, infect a nearby ally with crystal sickness, and this can happen up to three times with this proc. So how low is that proc? You know, that's kind of something. It says 1.5 procs per minute. What is that going to look like in plus? Is that going to be super sick or what? Um, they've also changed Global Jagged Ice for melee DPS for agility users. They also changed Tome of Unstable Power, where it used to be like a one or a three minute crit strike buff. Now you have a chance to create arcane illusions of yourself that channel for three seconds before unleashing an arcane barrage. And so now it's a bit more of an on use damage trinket as opposed to it being an on use stats and slight very, very minor damage trinket uh interesting but all things considered i think that this you know grand scale the resonator they've been mostly buffed and tried to make them a bit more usable because there was a maybe a bit of power creep between the trinkets across the entire season so these are all like pretty early uh trinkets by design and so they they it seems like they either needed to buff them or rework them to make sure that they were going to be a bit more in line with some of the stuff that we saw in like a mirror Silk, for example. Because with the Dinara system, you're able to acquire and um, have like deterministic acquisition on you know items, weapons, trinkets, that kind of thing. And so, with that being the case, Blizzard probably just saw some of the trinkets that were going to be really, really bad from the dungeons and were like, can't have that really happening. I went through and changed it. Beyond that. Afflicted got nerfed, so now they changed the cast time to be 12 seconds. Most players' dispel is 8 seconds long, and so by changing it from 10 to 12 seconds, this really allows uh, one player to be able to dispel Afflicted a bit more easily. So before, if you got Afflicted, the first Afflicted dispelled within the two-second window, you are able to dispel both Afflicted, and that was important for some compositions. But now with the change of it going up to 12 seconds, that creates a lot of more room for leeway on abilities where your you know your healer might have their dispel preoccupied in your hybrid dps so you only have one other hybrid dispel that'll allow them to be able to kind of pick up the slack and be able to dispel those off and so i don't think this solves all the issues with afflicted but i think that it does help a lot with what what the problems with afflicted still were the last thing that we saw for season four and 10.2.6 this week is nazuro and Fearlath legendaries are returning in season four upgrade items have been data mined and so this is going to allow you to be able to upgrade your weapon to item level 502 and upgrading it even beyond that. So for plate wearers, if you don't have your Fearlath, I'm super sorry. I would recommend still continuing to grind for that. For Evoker players, you might want to be starting your LFR Sarkarathes and maybe getting some people to help you out in either normal or heroic. Because having this weapon for next season would be awesome. And while... Uh, not having it would be unfortunate. It seems like, it, depending on what the acquisition process is on the upgrade item, you might want the weapon immediately. <laughs> um, if, especially if you're able to upgrade it near instantaneously and be able to put on, back on those legendaries. I think it's kind of cool that they're going to be keeping them usable in between seasons or uh, for the final season of the expansion. I think that's kind of interesting. Although, there's been a lot of complaints about the acquisition process on the legendaries this expansion. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, for evokers, you probably need to go start killing Sarkarath if you haven't and be able to get this scale of awakening once the patch drops. But overall, that's all we've kind of seen for Season 4. I suspect that we're going to be starting to see some more stuff with Season 4 in the relatively near future. Hopefully, maybe within the next couple of weeks. Plunderstorm, play Plunderstorm. It's a lot of fun. Super hype game mode uh, that Blizzard kind of dropped out of nowhere. And that's kind of it for this week. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.